friends, I welcome you all in this session. As you are aware in previous session we were discussing about multiple linear regression and we have seen how to work out a question having more than one independent variables. To, today we will see uh, some more examples on multiple regression including one of the variables, one of the independent variables as categorical variable. So, let us look at what is r squared coefficient of determination similar to simple linear regression. So, there itself we have seen that it is a regression sum of square to total sum of square. So, same formula will apply in case of multiple regression as well. So, this how you can calculate r square value for a given question. In fact, if you look at the same example which we worked out in previous session wherein uh, the dependent variable was sales, the independent variables were price and the second independent variable was advertising expenditure right. So, this is the output of that multiple regression question. So, r square is it is 52.148 percentage right. Is this can be seen over here in this part of the table, it has got three parts in this table, first part, second is ANOVA table and this is third part right. So, and this is nothing but the, uh, the p value of f right as whether the overall significant model is where the overall model is significant or not. And this is these are p values of individual independent variables. So, these two are also significant independent variables and these two independent variables explain 52.1 percent variation in dependent variable. This output from Minitemp for the same question you will get the same information this r square p value you have got r square here standard error 47.46 and so on right. So, this is the output from Minitemp. So, let us look at one more example on multiple regression. So, same SPAD owner and general manager of campus stationery store is concerned about the sales behavior of compact cassette tape recorder sold at the store. So, he realizes, realizes that there are many factors that might help explain sales, but believes that advertising and price are more important ones compared to other factors right. So, she has collected following data right. So, number of units sale sold advertising expenditure and price. So, she wants to know is there any relationship between dependent and these two independent variables. So, calculate least square equation to predict the sales from advertising and price right. If advertising expenditure is 7, 7 dollars and uh, price is 132 dollars what would be the sales. So, as I have told you that you can work out this question because this is a question y is equal to a, a 0 let us say b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 right. So, this is one, one unknown variable second and third right. So, three unknown variables you got three equations right first second and third. So, you can solve these equations and you can get a 0 b 1 b 2 right. So, this is how you would be getting it. So, a is equal to or a is, a is equal to is 2 1 9 this b 1 is the intercept of first independent variable this is the coefficient not intercept this is intercept this is coefficient of second one right which is price right. So, if you increase price sales will come down by this much amount and if you increase advertising expenditure sales will increase by this much percentage right and this much value not percentage. So, when when advertising expenditure is 7 just look at this. Yeah, when advertising is 7 and price is 132, 7 and 132, 
this would be in fact, uh, I think this is 63.8 this is what we have written here 63.8 yeah, no it is not 63 it is 6.38. So, this is this equation is let me rewrite this one it is 219 plus 6.38 into 7 plus not plus this is minus 1.67 into 132. So, you will get it this value is 44 right. So, this is not this is 6.38 right just uh, you can make this correction. Now, this is the output from Minitab software for this question. So, r square is 78.2 it means the variance in dependent variable which is being explained by two independent variables is 78.20 percentage. This is your constant value or intercept coefficient of first independent variable and coefficient of second independent variable right. So, this is price and this is ex advertising expenditure. So, this is your regression equation. Okay. So, let us work out this question using mini tab. So, this is the question we have got let us solve this question using mini tab. So, first of all you need to write the dependent variable sales, advertisement and price. Thirty three, sixty one, seventy, eighty two, seventeen. So, just six is the sample size. So, advertising expenditure is three, six, ten, thirteen, nine, and six. Then you need to enter price as well. So, it is 125, 115, 140, 130, 145 and 40. So, we will go to state regression fit regression model. So, response is sales right. So, this is your dependent variable and these two are continuous predictor variables are independent variables. So, we will click at OK. So, this is what the answer you are getting right. So, if you look at this these are ANOVA table p value 0.09 and 0.06. So, these two are significant at let us say 10 percent significance level. If you look at r square value this is 78.20 that is what I told you and this is your regression equation. So, if you want to calculate sales for a given price and for advertisement expenditure you can easily calculate. Okay. So, this is how you can solve a question on multiple regression using mini tab right. So, let us look at one more example on this a developer of food for pigs would like to determine what relationship exists among the age of a pig when it starts receiving a newly developed food supplement, the initial weight of the pig and the amount of weight it gains. So, the weight it gains uh, gains in, in a week period with a food supplement right the following information is available right. So, weight of the pig initial age and initial weight. So, this is your dependent variable these two are independent variables. So, first of all we need to calculate the least square equation and then what would be the weight right weight if the age is let us say 9 weeks and the uh, initial weight is 48 pounds. So, when you solve this question using mini tab this would be the output you would be getting. So, if you look at this at 5 percent significance level both are important right. If you look at this uh, coefficients right just see this 
So, this minus 4.19 is your intercept coefficient of x 1 which is 0 0.1048 coefficient of x 2 independent variable which is uh, initial age right. Okay. So, finally, at, at, at 42 of at 42 at 48 pounds and initial age of 9 and initial um, age of 9 and 48 pounds which is initial weight the weight gain would be 7.87 pounds right. So, you can work out this example again using mini type. So, you will have to enter data for dependent and independent variables. So, first of all your dependent variable which is uh, let it be initial weight independent variable not a problem initial age and then weight gain right. Now, just go for entering data for initial weights which is 39, 52, 49, 46, 61, 35, 25 and finally, 55. So, initial age 8, 6, 7, 12, 6, 7 and 4. So, initial age in terms of weeks right initial and the weight gain which is the dependent variable in terms of pounds. So, we will go to state go to state regression regression fit regression model. So, uh, here C 3 is the yeah this is your response variable or dependent variable while C 1 and C 2 are independent variables. So, we will click ok. So, you will get the same answer right. In fact, in slide I have taken this output only right. So, just see this is your regression line it is minus 4.19 plus 0 0.10 initial weight plus 0 0.807 initial age right. So, you can work out questions on multiple regression using mini tape. So, far we have checked the goodness of model by looking at r square value. Now, you may have a situation where uh, there are two models both of have got different sample size and both of them have got different number of independent variables. Now, in a situation like this you need to to compare uh, you need to use adjusted r square for comparison purpose. So, there is something called adjusted r square. Now, what is the what happens to the r square value whenever you add an independent variable the r square value increases. So, let us say r square is 90 percent with two independent variables if you add one more independent variable r square will go up if you add one more r square will again go up. So, the, the, the characteristics of r square is that it always increases with addition of an independent variable irrespective whether that independent variable is really adding to dependent variable or not. So, that is the drawback of r square r square does not take into account sample size you cannot uh, uh, it, it does not take into account independent variables as well right. So, there is uh, one more measure for looking goodness of fit of the model is adjusted r square. So, whenever you add an independent variable what happens is that you lose one degree of freedom and uh, the moment you lose one of one degree of freedom and the value of r square will increase. So, so you need to have a balance whether you are uh, losing a degree of freedom and the variable which you are adding is it really significant one 
So, there has to be a balance between these two. So, you need to always ask a question did the new variable add enough explanatory power to offset the loss, loss of 1 degree of freedom right. So, there is something called adjusted R square which is adjusted for two things sample size as well as for number of independent variables and it will always be its value will always be smaller than. So, you will have R square will always be greater than adjusted R square right. So, in other words it always be smaller than R square. So, this is how you can calculate adjusted R square for a given question. So, any sample size k is number of independent variables. So, what R adjusted R square does the moment you add an independent variable if it if it is a significant one if it is uh, really helping the dependent variable then only the adjusted R square will increase otherwise it will not increase. So, it penalizes the excessive use of unimportant vari independent variables it will always be smaller than R square and it is useful for comparing different models. So, this is the adjusted R square value for a question which we solved in previous class on multiple regression. So, R square was 52.148 percentage, but the adjusted R square was 44.2. So, now onwards do not look at R square value in any regression model always look at adjusted R square because it gives you a better picture of the model. So, we will say that 44.2 percent of variance in data is explained by independent variables namely the price and advertising expenditure right. So, this is how you can find out adjusted R square. Now, this is output from Minitab same value and same interpretation right. So, here you are getting R square and adjusted R square which is always smaller than R square. Now, let us test the model for uh, overall significance. So, so, whether the entire model is, is significant or not though we have seen the, the, the p value of f right. So, that will give you whether the model is significant or not. So, f statistics is this uh, ratio of these two it is a regression sum of square to error sum of square right. F statistics is 6.53 in this question and this is what is p value for f test. So, we will say that the model is significant at 95 percent significance level right. Of course, you will have to uh, this is output from mini tab same values for f and for p as well right. So, this is p value right point 0 0.012. two. So, here for testing overall significance of multiple regression model you are framing a null hypothesis that the both these coefficients are equal and they are 0 beta 1 and beta 2 are 0 and alternative is that they are not 0. So, calculated f statistics is this the table value at appropriate degrees of freedom it is 2 numerator and 12 denominator. So, you will calculate f value as like, like this and your table value is 3.885. So, you will reject the null hypothesis you will reject the null hypothesis it means these coefficients are not same. So, there is there is evidence that at least one independent variable affects dependent variable y. Now, let us look at uh, something called dummy variables. So, far we have taken cases wherein the independent variables were metric in nature. Now, let us take an example where dummy variable is a non metric. So, non metric variables are you can uh, think of again several examples let us say male female group 1 group 2 heavy coffee drinker medium coffee drinker right 0 1 right married bachelor 
is not it male female and so on. So, you can have different categorical variables and you can have different levels as well right. But when I, when I say uh, whether a person is married or bachelor so just two levels of, of a categorical variable right. So, it assumes the slopes associated with numerical independent variables do not change with value of categorical variable right. So, let us uh, look at this example. So, we will take the example which we have already solved, but here in this question the second independent variable is categorical in nature. So, y is sales, x 1 is price of the uh, product and x 2 is, is, is a day of the week. Now, it may be a holiday or it may be a working day. So, we will say x 2 is a categorical variable with two levels is not it. So, holiday x 2 if it is 1, if it is 0 it, it was no holiday right, it is a working day. So, you can find out what is the effect of, of holiday or a working day on sales for a given value of for a given price. So, y hat is equal to b 0 plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 is equal to 1 it means it is a holiday we are saying x 2 is equal to 1 means it is a holiday. So, you can rewrite this equation like this. So, this is the slope for x 1 and this slope for x 2 right. Similarly, when it is it is not a holiday it means now b 2 is this is 0 x 2 is equal to 0 and you can rewrite this like this. So, when it is a holiday this is the slope right this is the slope b 0 plus b 2. If it is it is not a holiday then this is the slope b 0. So, uh, this is how you can write equations for a for a for a categorical independent variable. So, for this question we are just looking at the output we are not looking at input data. So, we will say that the sales is equal to 300 minus 30 into price 15 into second independent variable which is x 2 right. Now, as we know that x 2 is equal to 0 and x 2 is equal to 1 1 and 0 right. So, when I say x 2 is equal to 1 it means it is a holiday right. So, if it is a holiday then the sales will increase by 15 units. Otherwise, if it is it is 0 then this entire term will become 0 when you put 0 over here. So, B 2 is 15 on an average sales were 15 pies greater than in weeks with a holiday. So, if there is a holiday in a week then the sales will increase by 15 units. Otherwise, it will not increase by 15 units. So, this is how you can take an example having independent variable in uh, independent variable uh, which is a categorical one right. So, let us look at uh, one more question this is a question on uh, multiple regression you have got dependent variable and you have got independent variables right. So, the question goes like this uh, uh, let us say the, uh, there is a building and uh, whenever uh, there is some repair work is to be done in the building you just call a repair uh, crew, crew members and get the work done right get the repairing done. So, there is uh, you, you have got two types of uh, information available with you. So, month since last service and repair time. So, we know that if the maintenance is frequently happening then repair time would be less. If the time between two different two maintenance is more then definitely repair time would be higher right. 
So, we want to know is there any relationship between the repair time and month since last service. So, let us say month since last service is 2 months repair time was 2.9 months or hours. Months since last service when the du when from previous service to next service if the duration is 6 months then this is the repair time when if it is 8 months then this is the repair time. So, we want to know is there any relationship between these two right. So, this is your independent variable x 1 right. The second independent variable is this x 2 which is categorical in nature which is non metric in nature and we know that the the repair time is also depends on whether the repair type is an electrical type or mechanical type is not it. So, we will have two levels for this particular independent variable. So, first we will solve this question as just simple linear regression model with one dependent variable and one independent variable right. So, let us solve this question. So, you when you when you solve this question this is your uh, adjusted r square now onwards do not look at r square value right. So, adjusted r square is 47.59 percentage and the intercept is this one this is intercept and this is coefficient of independent variable month since last service right. So, equation is y is equal to 2.14 plus 0 0.30 month since last service. So, let us say if month since last service is 10. So, just write 10 over here this will become 3. So, y value would be 2.44 is not it no this is 3 right. So, this would be 5.14 right. So, that would be the value of y. Now, let us work out this example using mini tab and let us see whether you are getting this output or not right. So, let us look at mini tab software and try to solve this question. So, we just deleted the output of previous question right. So, month since last service ok it is ok no need to write everything this is the repair time yeah time ok. So, month since last service you just enter data it was 2683279884. So, 10 data points then 2.9. So, the repairing time for the time being we are not writing uh, type of maintenance work right. We will take uh, into account second independent variable as well. So, this is how you should enter data for dependent and independent variable just go to stat regression fit regression model. So, time is response repair time is response and month since last service is, is predictor variable right. So, we'll just click ok. Yeah. So, this 2.14 and 0 0.30 right this what I told you which was there in this slide right 2.14 and 0 0.30 right. Let us look at whether the model is significant. Uh, in fact, we can look at p value of the f ok. So, if you look at the ANOVA table anyway you just look at look at the p value of independent variable only let us look at this. So, this is your independent variable month since last service. So, this less than 0 0.05. So, we will we'll say that this is quite a 
significant independent variable right. So, for the time being let me stop here in next class we will consider the second independent variable which is categorical in nature. Thank you very much.